Hey, Will Brink here at uh, BrinkZone.com, and uh, today I want to cover a, a highly controversial topic, which people have asked me to uh, cover a number of times, and I just haven't gotten around to it, and that is synthetic sweeteners. Uh, I don't know of a more controversial topic to get into, so uh, I'm going to try to keep it simple and try to stick to the point. Uh, you really can't have a conversation about synthetic sweeteners without following something called the three D's, and that is drug, dosage, and duration. Without uh, a conversation that includes those, it's, it's a nonsensical emotional conversation. Uh, all compounds, foods, drugs, doesn't matter, follow the three D's. For example, uh, do you really think, for example, one can of diet soda per year would do you any harm? The answer is no, and if you think otherwise, then you need to get a clue. The point being that the three D's applies. So at what point does the dose of a synthetic sweetener become really the issue? And, and that's really the unknown. Uh, I can tell you that synthetic sweeteners and the, and the other problems, we're not talking about specific synthetic sweeteners. I'm kind of lumping them all into one topic and you really do have to look at each individually, but we're gonna keep this as a, a general topic of synthetic sweeteners. Uh, the issue is these are some of the, probably the best studied chemicals of all time. Uh, and the majority, of the vast majority of the data, to be honest with you, does not show them to be uh, a health hazard to, to people. And I know that's not going to sit well with a lot of people because they've got themselves convinced it's the worst thing since uh, swallowing uranium. And of course they're going to make the immediate point, well, everybody, uh, the funding of that research, you know, they had financial vested interests, etc., etc. Sometimes that's true, a lot of the data is not. Uh, funded by uh, funded by the industry and to understand that a lot of the people that are trying to convince you of the evils of these synthetic sweeteners also have a financial vested interest. They're not just doing this as a rule uh, because they're uh, concerned about your health. They have books to sell. They have programs to sell. They've got their own. They've got their own. Uh, let's say objectives in this in this situation. Uh, honestly, the bottom line. What I'm trying to do is give you the bottom line on synthetic sweeteners vast majority of people, uh, it does not seem to present an actual health hazard to. But again, the three Ds, this is where the three Ds come in handy. Uh, if you're talking about a, a couple cans a week of diet soda, very unlikely to do uh, anyone any harm. If you're talking about 10 cans a day, that's another issue. There may be a potential problem there. There does appear to be a small subset of people, uh, I think it's somewhere in the 10% range or so, that. Uh, may have problems with some of the synthetic sweeteners. Again, we have to break down the indifference in synthetic sweeteners. There's uh, one of them that does appear to increase the likelihood of migraines in some people and such. So you really, again, uh, you have to take be objective when you're looking at this topic and understand that uh, there's some forces on both sides at work here that have an agenda. So basically, from my reading, and I have done a considerable amount of re uh, research literature searches and. Uh, of course, you know, in the, in the business that I'm in, I get thousands and thousands of emails. Um, honestly, if you're a normal, healthy person, your intake of synthetic sweeteners is fairly limited, like say a couple cans a week of diet soda or whatever, is very unlikely uh, to do any harm. Nothing is 100% safe on this planet, nothing. That includes air and water and getting out of bed. So again, uh, if somebody says, well, I don't want to take any chances. That's fine. You know, don't have any diet sodas. Don't have any synthetic sweeteners. That's perfectly legit. Uh, I do think there are some legit concerns with diet, uh, with synthetic sweeteners, sorry, regarding things like uh, keeping your sweet tooth going, uh, maybe having some, some issues as far as um, weight loss. They don't appear to have direct effect on preventing weight loss, but I am definitely convinced that what people need to do is learn to just accept having less sweet foods in their diet versus trying to replace them with synthetic sweeteners. That's a legit issue. Uh, and studies generally support that. Uh, people that have diet sodas and stuff generally just tend to replace those calories with other calories. That's legit. Uh, however, when we're looking at just straight up toxicity, you again have a lot of people, especially online, trying to convince you that synthetic sweeteners, again, are the worst thing uh, since cyanide in large doses, since crack, uh, since the uranium, and it's not true. Again, I, I think you again have to use your objective mind, use the concept of the three Ds, which is basically a, a solid foundational concept used in uh, all of science to look at something as to where does toxicity potentially take place, at what dose, and all that, and, and like I said, be, be objective about it, and I think you'll, you'll be able to kind of come to a, a, an obvious conclusion here that uh, 
A couple cans of soda a week, which I drink, I like an occasional Diet Coke, is not really going to do any harm. But again, like anything, regardless, uh, if you uh, tend to make it a major part of your intake, of your calories, whatever, that may be an issue. So I hope this helps uh, at least sort of uh, give you a, a balanced approach, balanced view. And if you like this vid, please, you know, you might want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. I don't know where I'm going to put it today, but you'll see it. Uh, and uh, share, and I'll see you all on the break zone.